Right, so on to the next one. That's Nia. Now, Nia is one of a uh, bundle of sensors which you have, which are to do with the position of other objects, other objects relative to your uh, object with the sensor applied. So again, we've got property filter. We'll come back to those, um, and we've got a motion actuator down here. So what's going to happen is it's going always hooked up to a simple motion. So the the sphere is always going to be moving towards the cube. Now, the near makes sure, basically looks out for any object that's near the cube, and you can set the distance to how far away it is. Uh, the reset distance you don't need to worry about, really. I just keep that really the same as distance. Um, and as we move, so the sphere moves towards the cube. As soon as it becomes in distance, within the distance of the near, then the cube. The, the simple motion of minus 0.1 on the x axis locally um, will be activated and the cube will move obviously to the left. So it will basically look like the sphere is pushing the cube when in fact the cube is a static object. In fact, and uh, so is the um, sphere. It's again worth noting that. Under physics, you've got to make sure Blender game selected. Um, actor is turned on here for the thing you want to check is near. Okay, because if you hover the mouse over, it gives object is detected by the near and radar sensor. So you've got to make sure that uh, that's checked. Otherwise, nothing will happen. It'll just pass straight through. We turn on actor. We press play. It makes it look like the sphere is pushing the cube along. All right. Next one, property. Finally, we've got down to properties. Okay. Now, on the uh, left-hand side here of the logic editor, we have a uh, property panel which we can bring up with the N key, just like in the 3D view. Um, and what you can do is you can set game properties for a specific object. Now, the one limitation we have is that they're only specific to that object, so you can't assign a property on another object. You have to send a message to it, or something like that, asking it to change its value. Um, so, here I've got a... Basically, I'm going to introduce another actuator, and this is the game... or well, actually, and the property, but the game actuator. And this basically allows operations of the game... Uh, loading and saving game logic or globals that basically just saves and loads the state of the current scene so you can it's like saving and loading your game really um, quit the game restart the game and start new one right so we've also got a property actuator here which is going to assign the property we have some other ones down here which we can uh, change it to but what we do is we create a new property and we can give it a name. Okay, and we have some different types here which we can uh, s um, set it as. Uh, if you watch my Python for Blender tutorial, you'll know a couple of these: boolean, true or false; integer, positive or negative; whole number; float, positive or negative; decimal. Uh, I can't remember how many precise digits. I think it's. 15? Or is that a double? I think a double's 15, 16. Uh, I can't remember what a float is. Uh, string, of course, we all know a string is basically just text. And we have the timer, uh, which is which is basically it, it, it increments every um, every f every logic tick. So it acts like a timer. And I think it's actually in seconds, but I don't know, to be honest. So, and we can change the values here, and we can print debug information. So that'll print information about the property in here when it's changed and added and things. All right. So we can assign this property using the assign property actuator. So first we select the property, and we set its value down here. Okay. And this is hooked up to a keyboard spacebar, 
and we have a new sensor to introduce of course which is the property sensor and we have different evaluation types so we can check if the property has been changed whether it's within an interval whether it's not equal or whether it's equal to a certain value so first of all we select the property then we put in the value so what's going to happen obviously is when the spacebar is pressed the property will be assigned the end game property will be assigned to one and the sense down here will check if the end game property is equal to one if it is then it quits the game so when I press the spacebar the game quits yeah it's a very long winded way of doing it but hey it's a good way to demonstrate the property system so I play the game press the spacebar the game ends if we press if we press this and press debug uh, start the game press the spacebar game ends that hasn't shown it. No, I haven't scrolled. No, it hasn't shown it. That's weird. It did before. Strange. Whatever. Hasn't shown any information for it, but hey. Blender's still beta. Right, now radar, I have to be honest here, I don't really particularly know how to use. Um, there are some other tutorials and things out there, you know, plenty of resources, but personally, I don't know what it is. Um, so we're just going to move on from that one. Rays are very, very useful, and they're used uh, for detection of all sorts of things. Here, um, I'm using a rays. Uh, I'm using rays to test whether this uh, sphere is basically near the cube. The thing about rays are that they have a sort of angle. So you know, as near searches everywhere around the object in a sort of spherical uh, view. With rays, they're sort of limited, so you can you limit the axis, first of all. So I've got this uh, down to the plus x axis, so this is uh, in that direction, off to the left from here, um, and I've got it down to the distance, it's the range is what it's called, but uh, it's basically the distance, and I've got this set to 10, because if we move this over about here, 10, that's where where that's where the 10 is. And I'm trying to pick up this sphere. Now there's no, nothing applied to the sphere, just going to stay where it is. And basically, whenever the rays detect um, a sort of, whenever the rays detect that the uh, sphere is there, really, um, then uh, it with uh, you can specify the property again and material or material to search for to filter by rather um, but whenever you whenever whenever you whenever the rays pick up an object which is ha matches the property and material um, then it becomes true and of course the motion actuators run now you can turn x-ray mode because rays can be uh, activated by solid walls. Now, I know what you're thinking, this could be good for AI. So this could be good, for, very good for detection. So, because of course, rays can bounce into walls and just die. Really? Think of x-rays. Best way, really. Um, now, with x-ray mode, they can see straight through walls. So you, you're really looking at a near sensor, but constrained to an axis. One more, final one is touch. Now I've set up a really, really quick scene here using uh, shape keys. If you don't know what shape keys are, ask and I'll do a quick tutorial uh, showing you how to use them. They are incredibly useful, especially with uh, facial posing um, and uh, very popular in the gaming industry. So as you can see, uh, as I change the value for key one on here, this sort of opens up as if the bullet's gone straight through it. It's pretty terrible, but I did it in five seconds, so. Alright, so we should be able to see this well enough. This introduces a, a new actuator as well. It's called the Shape Action Actuator. Now, this is really cool. Basically, you can make actions, see actions animations in Blender 2.53, my early tutorial. Um, you can make actions out of um, shape key values. 
so you can animate the shape key values and then use it in game so this is really great for sort of puppet puppeteering um, uh, facial animations and things like that you know so you can press the space bar and the character will smile things like that so you can, and it doesn't even have to be keyboard it can be python scripted you know, etc now the great thing about it is that you can layer them uh, you've just got to make sure when you're in the animation business for a long time you pick up a couple of tips and ways of doing things and a good tip is never use uh, properties never animate include properties in your animations uh, which you don't need really uh, so what I mean by that is do not keyframe basis and key one okay and add them and add them both into the action because then if you want to add another action and play that on top odds are it's not going to work so because what you'd want to do obviously is first of all animate key one to one and then you could have another action which animates basis also to one or sort of like that it's the same principle um, but if you have both of them keyed on one action okay then it won't work so you have to make sure that you only key the ones that you need right so start frame and end frame specify the frames for the action if we pop over to the uh, animation view I think I have to no, that's fine. Probably the animation view, we can see the action right here. It's only 10 frames. And if you have a look in the F curve editor, it's just changing the value of key 1 from 0 to 1. Alright. I'm going to see this played back. It looks like that. So let's go back to uh, game logic. So this is going to be run. Blend in is when you have multiple ones, really, and it it basically smooths the blending between them. Uh, priority is again for multiple, but that's for like more than two, and how you uh, how Blender um, layers them together. As it says, execution priority lower numbers will override actions with higher numbers. And there's some stuff about the um, multiple act more than two actions. So uh, here we have the touch sensor. Now, important note about touch, object with the sensor, touch, must be dynamic. So this cube here must be a dynamic object. If we go over to blend, make sure they just blend the game, go to dynamic. I've sent it as an actor, so I, I, it doesn't need to be. It just turns on automatically, but it doesn't matter. I've sent it to ghost as well, so that the bullet isn't going to push it out of the way. That wouldn't really work very well. Um, and I've also set the gravity to zero here. All right. So a touch is just like things like collision, except for the fact that you need to specify a material. At the moment, I've just got it a down as material. I've just given this a raw material default thing, and assign it to that. And this is filtering by it. Okay. Right, so now, when I press the uh, P key, what should happen is the bullet should whiz past, it's got a motion and always, it should whiz past through the cube and it should look like it's gone through and sort of impacted in it. Yeah, pretty poor, but it does the job. Now, the thing about this sort of thing is it doesn't just change the... Um, shape keys within the game engine okay it actually changes them within the scene entirely so if we go back to the um, shape keys for the cube we can see that key one is actually already at one but it's not being displayed in the 3d view uh, that's just a big um, problem there really a bit of a bug so make sure you set it back to zero again you could add an always with a tap on a game, no, a scene rather, with a restart. Uh, that's one way possibly doing it. I, I don't know, I haven't tried that yet. Uh, that, so that could work, that's one idea. Or you could do it with game restart or something. So yeah, but make sure taps uh, on, on uh, the uh, always.
sensor, otherwise it'll continually keep restarting the scene or game.